And to talk about that, we're happy to be joined in the studio by the Ukrainian Foreign Minister, Pavlo Klimkin. Welcome to the show. Thanks so very much for being with us. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be there. Um, you know, the first question has to be, how much is Ukraine willing to make compromises to make the ceasefire agreement work? Look, <laughs> compromises is a point of terminology. For me, the point of substance is the Russians' willingness to deliver on Minsk agreements. And Minsk agreements uh, are, in essence, a kind of peace plan. So if you like to go towards peace, what, what do you do normally? You stop shooting. You <clears throat> let the OEC to control the territory. You let the OEC to control pulling uh, out of forces. You let the OEC to control the part of the border where we've been getting the whole inflow of weapons of Russian regular troops. And you start talking about uh, free and fair elections. How to make in Donbas free and fair elections? But the Russians are saying that they are, in fact, upholding the Minsk agreements, that they're the ones that are keeping everything going. Look, just to give you a couple of examples. We have in Donbas now 2,000 tanks and armored vehicles. We have the whole lot of weapons. Can we start preparing for elections having the whole lot of weapons in Donbas? having the continuous inflow through the Ukrainian and Russian border, you know, the batch which we don't have under our control. And if we have 50, 60, 70 shellings from prohibited weapons, so is it a kind of real launch for any kind of effective start? Mr. Foreign Minister, the Kremlin, though, is saying that they have very limited influence in the Donbass over the Ukrainian separatists. Look, it's a joke. There are no people who are independent from Russia. Military, the whole situation there is steered from Rostov, from Russia, by Russian militaries. And who is in charge there is Russian special forces and Russian special agencies. It's even in the sense of uh, currency, the Russians have been trying to eject more Russian ruble, undermine Donbass. These are informal talks going on right now uh, here in Germany. Uh, is there a way that channels can be open to talk to the Russians, for the Ukrainians and the Russians to talk and, and hammer these things out behind the scenes? Look, firstly, we have Normandy format. We have to stick to Minsk and we have to stick to Normandy format because the Germans and the French who have been acting with the clear mandate by the European Union are really important place, and we've been enjoying continuous support by the Germans and the French. But here you see Russia clearly playing on time, not trying to deliver on everything, but simply waiting for more destabilization in Ukraine and trying actively to destabilize the situation, waiting for future elections here in Europe. You know, somehow, uh, uh, believing that it would also destabilize the situation here and maybe playing for uh, U.S. election to come. So it's a kind of conundrum. And we need Russia to deliver on Minsk. Because of that, sanctions are important, solidarity is important, and political pressure is, is very important. Mr. Foreign Minister, wouldn't a way forward be perhaps to declare autonomy and then have elections? Allow autonomy for the government in Kiev Kiev to allow the Russian separatists in this part of Ukraine to first, to first have autonomy and then what, have the elections. What, what, what is autonomy in the sense if you have Russia fully controlling the situation in Donbas? And if we give autonomy like the Russians believe it's the way forward, and for, the, for Russia it's the way towards federalization, towards weakening up and fragmenting Ukraine, it's just about legitimizing the Russian protectorate now in Donbas. And after that, the Russian strategy is to put, to push this protectorate back into Ukraine as a kind of Trojan horse. What's the Ukrainian strategy then? Ukrainian what, what, strategy yeah. is to deliver on Minsk. And it's easy if you are ready to deliver on Minsk, is stop shelling to give control for the situation for the OEC, for the special monitoring mission and for the armed OSCE police mission to control the situation, to get Russian weapon out of Donbas, and to start preparing for free and fair elections.
Okay, do you think the separatists would go along with that? Is there a chance? Look, it's just about Russia. There are no any kind of independent uh, people in Donbas, independent from Russia. It's all about uh, Russian steering there. Okay, one disconcerting development is the announcement by uh, President Petro Poroshenko that he's preparing or willing to introduce martial law and a new wave of military mobilization. Don't you think that that would further escalate the situation? Look, the president clearly said, if the situation gonna substantially worsen, there, there could be consideration about introduce, introducing martial law, about introducing other measures. So far, uh, we need to fully commit ourselves to ceasefire, to pressure Russia to deliver on Minsk. And to get the OSCE on the ground. And to get the OSCE, and they mean special monitoring mission and armed police mission on the ground. And look, just imagine, we have 2,000 tanks and armored vehicles. We need to put this weaponry under clear control. The better way would be to push it back because it's all Russian weapon. Let's get it back to Russia and let's have free and fair elections, but under international control. Mr. Pavlo Klimkin, Foreign Minister of Ukraine, thank you so very much for your time for being with us today. Thanks a lot. It was a pleasure.